Gulf, a long way from Coronado, California. My assignment, stay close enough to a woman to learn the name of a man. It sounded simple, but the agents of the two nations paying my fee had been seeking the name for three years. If any had learned it, he hadn't lived to report it. In the evening, the air would be clean and sharp like a knife in the back. But in the heat of the day, it was a blunt instrument hammering your skull. Like a summit with a thousand gray heights, you intoxicate me so. Mr. Bricker? Is it all right if I sit down? I hear the El Mansers leaving for the coast. India, Bombay. What's the matter? Don't you like her singing? Down the dock, they said to see the first mate about passage. We don't carry passengers anymore. The owners didn't find it very profitable. One of the crew on watch says you booked a couple of passengers. Yeah, they're, they're special cases. There's one of them over there sitting with Captain Kelly. She's a governess for a family in Bombay. Now, you don't figure that he's going to put her off and put you on in her place, do you? <laughs> no. 500 bucks. Hey, you're real anxious, aren't you? I just want to go where the Al Mancer's going, that's all. I'm sorry. You got a full crew? Yes, we had. What's the matter with you? Don't you like good music? <laughs> that 500 bucks could go in your pocket if you'd ship me on as a hand. Why don't we take 10, Blondie? Yeah. Well, what's your answer, yes or no? Did you like my number, Jake? I did it special for you. Go park it right here, honey. Oh, why, thank you, I'm sure. There, you see, Jake, how a gentleman treats a lady? You know, honey, when you open your mouth to sing, you make real good sense. But when you open your mouth to talk, you're a real bird brain. So unless you're singing, keep quiet. You shouldn't talk to me like that. This gentleman wouldn't talk to no lady like that. Honey, I told you to keep your mouth shut unless you're singing. How about the 500 bucks? Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to the captain. Well, you but... sit right here, honey, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll see you aboard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Throw your gear forward and report to the quartermaster. Well, well, what do you know? It's the gentleman. I never expected to see you again except dead. Practically diving off that balcony. Well, whatever made you do it? Well, I was in a hurry to get downstairs. <laughs> I never expected to see you again, either, especially aboard this tub. Oh, I've had my passage booked for days. I got a real swell booking in a club in Bombay. Uh, are you going to be with us? It depends on... Uh... On Jake? Jake, you've just got to let this gentleman come with us. Take a walk, Ollie. But... Take a walk, Ollie. But... What'd the captain say? Look, you made out of rubber or something? I bounce a bit. You got the $500? Yeah, just. Mr. Bricker. Yes, ma'am. 
Wasn't this the man that jumped off the balcony at that cafe? Yes, ma'am. Aren't you going to turn him over to the authorities? Well, he, uh, he explained it to the police. It was a case of mistaken identity. We're going to take him along as a passenger. Uh, my name's Adams, Dan Adams, miss. I'll show you where your cabin is. It's not a luxury liner, but we've got plenty of room. You know, they must have wanted you real bad to make you take a dive like you did. Let's get something straight. There's no reward for me, so there's no payoff for you or anybody else if you tip them off I'm a board. <laughs> Hey, what do you think? I'm not sure yet. If you're talking about Mr. Adams, he's a real gentleman. Class with a capital Q, that's what I think. Maybe the Baghdad tip was right. A government agent? Mooney said we might have one aboard. No, Skipper. No, an agent wouldn't risk breaking his neck the way the character did getting away from the cafe. No, he's an oil worker or a sailor. An amateur who thinks he discovered a new way to make a quick buck. Well, either way, we're safer to have him aboard where we can keep an eye on him. <laughs> I think he's cute. A real gentleman. Well, there's a lot of deep water between here and Bombay. I'll find out what he's up to once we're underway, when it's too far out for him to yell for help. Yeah. You uh, better get up on the bridge. Yes, sir. Holly. Okay, okay, I'm going, I'm going. and wave goodbye and nothing? Or nothing. I did. I waved goodbye and farewell to this crummy town. Well, maybe you like Bombay better. <laughs> I'm sure gonna like the trip, anyhow. <laughs> uh, you want me to help you unpack or anything? Press anything? Sew on buttons? I've lived out of a suitcase practically my whole life. <laughs> I'm an expert. No, thanks, just the same. Uh, honey, don't you like me? I don't want to be put over the side. Jake? Well, I didn't think you'd be afraid of Jake. Not after the way you got rid of those cops. <laughs> well, I don't run so well on water. <laughs> oh, I, I'm sorry. Oh, come on in, honey. I was just making sure he was uh, comfortable. <laughs> I didn't want to intrude. <laughs> I was just leaving. Did she uh, make sure you were comfortable? Well, she made a good try. I'm glad you've decided to establish friendly relations. I admit it. I uh, would like to get to know you better, Mr. Adams. Come on in, Jake. Turn around. Look, I don't get it. You're a cop. You could have picked me up on the dock. Open the suitcase. That gun makes me nervous. Might go off by accident. If it goes off, it won't be by accident. Go ahead, open it. Now move back. Sure of it. I've got a cracked rib. All right, so you found a little gold. What business is that of yours, unless you are agents? You're a very lucky man. We thought you were an agent. If we hadn't seen that gold and that uh, adhesive tape. You know, taping gold strips to your legs and your chest are not with the camel trains. I am disappointed, Mr. Adams. An amateur smuggler. Amateur? There's 10,000 in gold there. I can get 18 for it in India. You'll never get it to India. Look, I'll make a deal. I'll split it with you. Look, we're not interested in your silly 10,000. Well, you're taking it with a gun. That seems like interest. Customs catches you, and they would. They'd search the whole ship, and we don't want it searched. It's as simple as that. You know where to put it, Jim. Yeah.
Look, I saved two years in the oil fields to buy that gold. It's all I got. You have a big, strong body with life in it. Be happy. Down there in the engine room, huh? If you're bucking for a job in Hades, the engine room's a place. Keep it casual, Adams. I'm your contact man. What contact man? The government put me on in Karamzar. Said to stay close to you. <laughs> I want to pick him up when I tell you who he is. I know who he is. He's my engineer. He told me he was a government agent. Get that board of water! Well, what did he say? What did you say? I said what you told me. I was his contact man. The government put me on a caram, sir. He didn't know what I was talking about. He just belted me. He doesn't like policemen. Next time you want some information, let her get it. I think we've got what we need. All uh, right. We can forget him. Gee, I don't like policemen either. You should have seen after they raided that place in Tehran. You just should have seen. And I thought I was going to be bored to death on this trip. Or is, um, Holly more your type? You're my type, as long as you've got my gold. Why'd you throw him overboard? He wasn't an agent. No, I know that now. So what if he was an agent? You're not in the smuggling business. Not this trip, anyway. I still have hopes of getting my gold back. Afraid hey, not, Adams. My boss doesn't like competition on his side of the street. How could I know I was on his side of the street? I like a man that makes quick decisions and takes direct action. Even if he doesn't know very much about getting gold ashore. I haven't gotten any gold ashore yet. Well, cheer up. We like good people in our operation. Over the long haul, you could make that gold you had look like nickels. You do the hiring and firing? It's a dangerous question. I want to know who I'm working for. No. I don't hire and fire, but I can get you in touch with a man who does. I'll think about it. You've thought about it, lover. I want you in this operation for personal reasons. Going up the radio room, get off a message. Oh, uh, we're still checking for your gun under the pillow anyway. I wasn't worried about the gun under the pillow. When they checked the numbers, they'd find it was listed as stolen back in Koramshar. And I still had a second gun taped to the bottom of the bunk. So far, it looked as if only Jean Dumarie was ready to buy me as an amateur gold smuggler. got a grip. I don't think I'll ever be able to use this arm again. I was told there wouldn't be any room service. Well, all the passengers get it, sir. It's a nice gun. I just wanted to make sure it was in working order. It's in working order. Coronado de Bombay, Mr. Adams. Lieutenant Jones, out of the Tehran office. 
Glad to know you, Lieutenant. I think we better keep it Jonesy, the cabin boy. Yeah, and be careful. This crowd takes a hard sell. I don't think they've quite accepted me yet. Yes, I know. I think they've got a lot at stake. But the captain said I can send a message to let my mother know when I'm going to arrive in Bombay. Well, tell them they can search the ship when it docks. I think they'll find a shipment. Well, I haven't been able to spot it. Well, at least they'll get back the bars the department lent me. Yes, well, if it's a shipment, they'll find it. Unfortunately, they want a little more than that. The name of the top man. Now, this has been going on for three years, and it won't stop until they find him. Well, we've got a few more days at sea yet. I won't send a message till I hear from you. Good luck, anyway. Come in. Hi. Oh, Jonesy, would you put some clean towels and ice water in my cabin when you're through here, please? Right, you are, miss. I'm through there anyway. Uh, honey, do you go for that intellectual highbrow stuff like Mr. Maris? Oh, she's a very nice lady. So are you. You want to play some dominoes? a message you've been waiting for, sir. That's what I wanted to talk to you about. Just how hot are you? With the police, not the weather. The gun was listed as stolen, along with some other loot. Look, I've got no record. I bought that gun. It was on you. That's why you jumped off the balcony that day. Is that what you suppose? Look, we can't afford hot employees, Dan. But you got the job. The OK came through. Well, I don't remember saying I wanted a job. I said I'd think about it. I wanted to see whoever's doing the hiring and firing, about getting my gold back. Don't quit harping on it. You'll make out. One thing is important, don't get chummy with the crew. Aren't they all part of your outfit? No. You'll be safe talking to Captain Kelly, Jake Bricker, LeBeau, the engineer. Do you know him? You gave him the first bath he'd had in a month. <laughs> the radio operator and me, but that's all. Can't I play uh, dominoes with Holly anymore? She doesn't count one way or the other. Except I am a little jealous of her. Why are they suddenly so friendly after spending half the trip on my back? We had a tip a government man might be on board. We had to be careful. We're not worried anymore. LeBeau and Bricker got him last night. And that's who I heard yell. They put him over the side? Not yet. That's going to be your first job. They're taking him to your cabin, away from the crew. You have to talk to him, then dispose of him. Talk about what? We've got to find out where the leak was in our organization, why they put him aboard. Let Bricker do it. Bricker tried. We'll feel better about you after you try. Look, I'm not about to ask for that kind of trouble, killing a government agent. You'll be in a lot more trouble if you don't. Doesn't that kind of trouble worry you, Jean? Just set up your doors, you're told. Who's the guy they caught? Jonesy, the cabin boy. He found our shipment. 
Let's go and get it over with. I'm no cop, Mr. Adams. I'm on my own. I may be a thief, but I'm no cop. He's all yours, Adams. My knuckles are sore. All right, get her out of here. Leave them to me. Uh-uh. We'll watch. I'll make it easy on yourself. What's the difference? You're going to kill me anyway. You can have it easy or hard. Now tell the man what he wants to know. I'm no cop. Oh. Look out! Hold it! Where did that gun come from? I always keep a spare handy. I forgot it was there, though. Holly! What went wrong? Jonesy came up with a gun. Well, they're both dead, Bricker and Jonesy. I think you made a mistake. I don't think he was a cop. Adam just left a gun lying around. We won't worry about that now. Captain Kelly, proceed ahead at quarter speed until I get in touch with my father. I'm the captain of this ship. Be the captain, but do as I say. Jean, get the radio man. I give the orders. Tell him, Jean. Father may want us to turn back and not dock at Bombay. Holly Crane. Crane Hollister. He's her father. I'm surprised it didn't register before, Captain. Crane Hollister, Captain. He didn't have much confidence in you and Bricker. That's why he sent me along. I'm very sorry about the mistake we made about you, Adams, but uh, we'll take care of that. Well, maybe you were right the first time, Holly. Lieutenant, I thought my domino game would give me away. I told you you were fools about him. You feel up to holding a gun, Lieutenant? Yes, especially if one of them moves. Uh, who's going to be taking shipping while you're holding us? I promise you, you'll never get ashore. I'm going to have a talk about that right now with the radio operator. Coast Guard Station, Bombay. Calling the Indian Coast Guard Station, Bombay. Look, you ought to see a doctor. You better tell me exactly where we are. This is the Al Manser calling the Indian Coast Guard Station, Bombay. This is the Al Manser calling the Indian Coast Guard Station, Bombay. Bombay.